Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with the Texas Gun Vault Poll Question of the Week, a weekly vlog that I ask you about something that deals with guns, gun culture, politics, current events, the news, or something fun like EDC that I want to get your thoughts and opinions on. And this week's poll question kind of leaves the realm of politics and current events. I've been asking you guys a lot about current events and politics in the past few polls. And I know this can be a little bit sad because it makes everybody anxious or upset or worried. And I was like, you know, this week we just need to have a little fun and talk about cool guns and more specifically, old cool guns. And what cool guns do you have in your collection that are many, many years old? And so I brought out three of the oldest guns of my collection. And more specifically, I'm asking you guys about the most functional guns of your collection. Because I know we all probably have some type of ornament or wall hanger. I know it would probably be the oldest gun that I own. It's a single shot 12 gauge shotgun, probably from about the 1920s. That was my great, great grandfather's. But unfortunately, because of its condition, I don't really think it's functional. The stock is broke, the action doesn't work, but it does hang on the wall. But I want to ask you about your functional firearms. And the reason is, is one thing I don't think anti-gunners understand and appreciate is that firearms are durable goods. They can outlast you, your kids, your grandkids, and even your great grandkids. So even in a gun control utopia where they can ban this and ban that these guns aren't going anywhere and they're not just like any other type of antique that just might sit around accidentally get thrown away because they're very valuable they're very useful tools and people do respect them even if they are anti-gun and these things get put in attics they get put in safes and they can just sit there and they don't degrade and I think the fact that many of us have working firearms that are many decades old goes to prove this. That even in, as I said, that dystopian future for us and the utopian future for the gun control advocates, guns aren't going away. That horse left the barn years ago. But I don't want to talk too much about politics. I want to talk about cool guns. So with all that said, let's dive right into this week's poll question. For this week's question, I thought I would venture back into things that are less political and more in the realm of general and fun gun talk. So this week, I wanted to ask you about the oldest gun you own. Guns are durable goods that, if taken care of, can outlast you, your kids, and maybe even your grandkids. It is one of the aspects of firearms anti-gunners do not take into consideration when they want to ban them. That is, they have no shelf life. What is the age of the oldest functional or working firearm you own? That does not have to mean you shoot it often, just that you think it is safe to shoot and not just for decoration. As I already mentioned, I do have that one wall hanging shotgun that is definitely not functional. It would not be safe, but I did bring out a couple that are really cool. And of course, many times these are going to be family heirlooms. Two of these are guns that either my great grandfather or my father owned. And a, another one that I have here is one that I picked up because you guys know I love military guns. And I bought this actually from a local subscriber after I reviewed it here on my channel. But let's kind of go back chronologically. The first one I have here is what I think is an early 1960s Charter Arms Undercover. This is a 38 Special Revolver. This was owned by my father and his stepfather. And this was actually the first gun that I ever really laid eyes on in real life. Based on the serial number, this comes from the early 60s and is one of the earliest revolvers that Charter Arms made. Charter Arms was a company that was founded by an ex-Colt employee who thought he could make revolvers at an affordable price and, of course, undercut Colt. And Charter Arms is still around today making affordable revolvers. Not a lot of people know about the company, but revolvers is pretty much all that they specialize in. Then I have a shotgun that I think was my great great grandfathers and this one was given to me by my father this is an Ithaca gun model 1937 featherweight in 20 gauge and of course it's a pump action shotgun and my dad had taken this hunting and his dad had taken him hunting 
and it has been just in the family for quite some time. And I believe the date on this one dates back to the early 1940s. Now these had been in production since 1937, and I believe it's called the Featherweight is the actual uh, model. And this thing is functional. I have only shot it one time. I just wanted to make sure that it still worked. And one day I plan on maybe sending it back to Ithaca to actually have it restored because they do offer a service for guns like this. It's not a very super valuable gun on the open market, but it does have a lot of sentimental value. And I think actually having it professionally restored would be really, really cool. And the last gun I want to show you from my personal collection is a gun that I bought from a local subscriber. His name is Ken. He's lent a number of guns to the channel. And this is a 1954 Russian-made SKS. Yeah, I think that is just really cool. A very interesting gun. Really the predecessor to the AK-47. It was the first gun ever chambered in 7.62x39. And there's many design features of this that I think made it into the AK. But this thing runs like a top. It's a lot of fun to shoot. It's very accurate. And once again, made in 1954. And here it sits in my modern gun collection. It still is relevant today. And that's pretty cool because in a couple of decades, this thing will be 100 years old. Yeah, that's amazing. And these guns still function. They're safe, they're accurate, and they're fun to shoot. So can you only imagine the guns that are made today and how durable they're going to be because they're made with the latest and greatest manufacturing techniques and materials. But that's my guns. So let's see what you guys said with this week's results. And with 147 votes this week, we have 0 to 25 years old. All my guns are new and modern, 32%. 26 to 50 years old, I have a few that were owned by my father, 16%. 51 to 75 years old, I have a gun that was owned by my grandfather, 12%. 75 to 100 years old, I have a vintage World War I or World War II gun. 20%, and over 100 years old, I have something that is a true antique, 20%. Now, granted, a gun that is 100 years old now could have been used in World War I. I was just trying to put some generalities when it comes to dates on these things. One of the particulars about U.S. gun law is that any gun that was manufactured before January the 1st, 1899, is considered an antique. It's not a firearm. It does not require an FFL. It does not require to have any type of background check. It's not even a gun in the eyes of the law. That's really interesting when it comes to antique guns, but that date doesn't move up as time goes on. And I've even had some people talk to me about this poll saying, hey, I have a black powder gun from the 1880s. I mean, that is really, really cool that they still can shoot. How awesome is that and I was very surprised to see some of these results because it's pretty balanced and wide-ranging and once again just goes to show that firearms are very durable goods but let's break down each one of these and talk about them 0 to 25 years old all of my guns are new and modern and this got the most votes and I was kind of expecting that because today in the gun world there are so many new gun owners that have just gone out and bought their first gun and maybe they come from a family that weren't gun owners, that they didn't have guns for hunting or self-protection or maybe were not veterans and brought guns back from World War II or the like. But I actually think this bodes well for the Second Amendment and many times I'm pretty blackpilled on the Second Amendment where I don't think our right rights are going to be preserved in the future. But the more new gun owners we have that love guns, love to collect guns, love to shoot guns responsibly, it only helps us because it increases our numbers. And so the fact that many people have newer guns mean they're newer gun owners. And as I said, I think that's a great thing. Then we have 26 to 50 years old. I have a few that were owned by my father. And of course, by saying 26 to 50 years old, it doesn't have to be owned by your father. I was just giving an example there. I was actually surprised this didn't get more votes because I know that the predominant 
people in the gun culture today are probably my age or a little bit older. And many times people want to recapture their youth. And I know there's a lot of people that were kids of the 80s and the generation older than me in the 70s, and they're going to want to go out and buy guns that were popular when they were younger, like Colt Pythons, or in my case, the 1980s, you know, HK Legacy guns and Uzis. But only having 16% that kind of surprised me, but still shows me there's a lot of those older guns out there. Then we have 51 to 75 years old. I have a gun that was owned by my grandfather, 12%, and this got the least, and that really did surprise me. But I will say that's most likely because after World War II, we had so many guns that were on the surplus market because of those wars. Maybe gun manufacturing here in the United States was not as predominant as it is today. And of course, that growth happened over time so maybe there's just fewer guns out there from that age and I would say when it comes to gun collecting and going online I don't really see many people collecting guns from the 50s and 60s specifically because of that vintage they're more interested in the World War II military surplus stuff or later you get into the 1980s where you start to see more of the transition into the tactical firearms so maybe that just has to do with the number of guns that were produced in that era and then we have 75 to 100 years old, I have a vintage World War I or World War II gun, 20%. And of course, this is where actually I thought I would get the most votes because, man, World War II collecting is huge. You go on to all of the big auction websites and you look at any gun from that conflict and World War I, whether it's the Axis powers or the Central powers or the Allied powers, it doesn't matter. All these guns are valuable and they're sought after. And so I kind of thought that many of these vintage guns were going to be in the hands of you guys and you guys would say, this is the oldest gun that I have. But combined with the next one, which is over 100 years, that's over 40%. So over 40% said at least 75 years or older. That's pretty darn impressive. And once again, shows just how awesome guns are as a durable good and protecting our freedom into the future. And then finally, we have 100 years old. I have something that is a true antique. That is really cool. The oldest gun I think I have ever shot was a World War I Luger made, I believe, in about 1917. And that was at a gun range. I was there quite a few years ago. I even remember it was a gun range down in a place called Everman, Texas. I think it was called Alpine. But anyway, I know that's a side note, but I was down there shooting something and there was a nice gentleman in the stall next to me and I saw he was shooting this Luger and I said, hey, that is a really cool gun. He says, hey, do you want to shoot it? I'm like, yeah, that would be awesome. So it was so cool to get to shoot a piece of history that was in World War I. It had all the acceptance marks. It was numbers matching. It was really cool. And you really felt connected to the history of that gun and the World Wars. After all, this gun was older than my grandparents. So this gun was made before they were born and was, is here after they passed away. That is just cool. And it makes me wonder where many of the guns of my collection are going to be in 75 or 100 years. You know, the one thing about guns that sometimes I think we miss in the grand story is who owned them before us. You know, when it comes to some guns, they've probably been bought and sold five, six, seven, who knows, 20 times, and you lose that provenance of who owned it before. What did they do with it? Was it part of a collection? Was it just a single gun? Where did it travel to? What did it do? What were the gun ranges it was used on? What targets did it shoot? Well, that might seem boring to some people. I think every item can tell a story and a unique story, and I wish that maybe we kept better records of our firearms, but that's just my personal opinion, because when it comes to these I would love to know the story. Like with this SKS, who made it? Was it carried in the Soviet Army? Where was it located during the Cold War? I'll never know the answers to those questions, and I can only wonder. But asking those questions, I still think, is pretty darn neat. But that's what I think about all of this. But let's see what you guys had to say in the top-rated comments of the week. And the top rated comment of the week comes from Scott Brown 5438 who says, I have a trapdoor Springfield and a 3040 Crag that are over 100 years old. They're both an awesome part of our military history and they're both in pretty good shape. 
And I'm going to tell you, I actually think the Krag rifles are one of the coolest rifles we ever fielded in the United States military. It is so cool that you could load the rounds, just let them drop into the side of the receiver through this little door, and it loads them. It's a bolt action rifle. I think it's one of the shortest serving rifles in our military. I still think it is mechanically very, very interesting, and I would love to get a chance to shoot one of those one day. It sounds like he has some really awesome guns. Then we have Sabertooth Defense Systems, who said, just bought a service-grade M1 Garand, 30-06, from an individual whose father received it from the CMP. The seller never shot it and wanted it to go to somebody who would actually shoot it, use it, and appreciate it. I couldn't pass up on such a cool piece of history. It's dated back to May of 1945. Just a neat piece of history I've always wanted and finally owned. And that is so cool. Well, to me, if it's never been shot and it's that old, I might not want to shoot it. But I understand if he wants to go out and enjoy it. It is his personal property. But being made in May of 1945, it was made literally at the tail end of the war. So is it really a World War II relic? Eh, I don't know. But it's still a cool gun. And I think the M1 was called by General George S. Patton the greatest battle implement ever devised. You know, one of the things when we talk about old guns that I think we all wonder is like, like, why in the world did I have a chance to buy this gun in the past and I didn't do it? You know, I remember when I first got into guns, M1 Garands were kind of expensive, but they weren't as expensive as they are today. I kind of wish I can go back in time and buy it. Then we have Marine Accountant 3171 who says... I have a Savage 1906 and 22 with a hexagon barrel. I bought it this year for my birthday. Something about a super old classic 22 long rifle is just neat to me. 22 was cheap then and it still is today in comparison to larger calibers. And that is cool. He went out and bought an old gun on purpose because of its age. Yeah, that is just so cool. And I'm so glad that people today are still doing that because it keeps us connected to the history of firearms and keeps this tradition going on. As I said, you got to sit down and wonder what's going to happen to your guns? Who's going to own them in a hundred years? And I hope that my whole collection is owned by somebody in a hundred years. They might not even know who I was, but they're going to appreciate the mechanics of the guns, shoot the guns, enjoy them, and hopefully still be fighting for their second amendment freedoms. Then we have Thomas Washburn, 3513, who says, I own six firearms that are over 100 years old, including one that turned or turns 100 this year, a CG Hanel Model 1 in 25 ACP. One was made 137 years ago this year, Winchester Model 1873 and 3840. Two same similar Springfield Model 1898 and 1899 and 3040 Krag, one rifle and one carbine. A Springfield Model 1884 made in 1891. 4570 trapdoor with ramrod bayonet and finally a Winchester model 1890 pump action 22 short made in 1921. I shot each of them in August as I do every year. I have many more newer firearms but the classics cannot be beat. The sheer engineering alone is amazing. Yeah, you know, they always say when it comes to things like cars and guns, they just don't make them like they used to. Man, those old guns are still really reliable and very durable. I still think the guns of today might even outlast those because of the materials and the technology. But we'll have to see. But I probably won't be around in 100 years to find out. And then we have Joe Morgan, Eat My Shorts channel, who said, Oldest gun I ever owned was an FN 1900 made before World War I, but I don't have anything older than the 90s now. And that's actually really cool because the M1900, I believe, was the first John Browning commercially available gun that was semi-automatic that used the top of the gun as the slide and the bolt combined. So today we take that for granted, that the slide is the bolt. But back then, 
In 1900, that was a revolutionary design, and that's a really important gun in the history of firearms. So that is really cool that you guys own such amazing guns, and I'm glad that we share this love and appreciation for older firearms. And as I said, I hope this bodes well for the future of the Second Amendment and the gun collecting and shooting community. So I hope you guys like the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. We got a lot of votes, more than we have in the past week, so I'm really happy about that. If you guys want to participate in next week's poll, please go to the community tab of my YouTube channel. I will post a link in the description and in the comment section. Please go over there, see what this week's poll is about. Vote, comment, and like other people's comments so we can get the top-rated comments of the week. And once again, I'm glad you guys love old guns just like I do. So let me know what you think in the comment section below and tell me about your awesome, cool old gun collection. So, as always, thanks for watching.